Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our weekly training for Team Mission Probable. I'm Jeff Altman, and I am really thrilled to be joined by a great friend, a great leader in the industry, Paul Moore, otherwise known as Big Polly. And we have got just a ton of absolutely phenomenal information to share with you today. And this is going to be the continuation in a two-part series. Maybe it could end up being a three-part series because there's just so much to share. And this information is so vitally important to your business that um, I don't think we can just get it in in one, two, um, even three days. It's something that we're going to need to continue to um, talk about on an ongoing basis and you know last week we covered where to find a lot of this information um, those of you who are in the Empower Network with us um, if you don't have the viral blogging Academy and the 15k formula you're not only missing out on some incredible education but also you know when you start using this information to get just millions of eyeballs in front of your blog post on a weekly basis or I'm sorry, on a daily basis, you're going to be leaving a whole ton of commissions on the table because these commissions are going to start happening accidentally. So if you don't have those products, I encourage you to you know get them right away. You know, and just to recap, we talked about a lot of different uh, a lot of different resources to syndicate blogs, a lot of which are free, and you know, Polly's going to. Paulie's going to just really take this thing over, and um, he's going to blow your mind with some of the tactics he uses um, in his blogging. And how you doing today, Polly? Great to have you here, man. Hey, brother. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for inviting me to come speak with y'all. Yeah. Hey, Polly. I got to ask you. Um, I know we never really talked about this. And I got to tell everybody. Polly and I met in Chicago last year at an Empower Network event, and Man, it was it was like a long lost brother, you know, meeting a long lost brother. I mean, we clicked right away, and I mean, you know, even though, um, you know, you know, I'm not directly sponsored by Polly, so you know, we're not in and out of each other's pockets, so to speak, as far as commissions go. But man, we've really locked arms and and you know gotten to communicating about some different strategies that we're both using and it's been just a phenomenal partnership for both of us and you know I really value, value his time I value his friendship and I'm thrilled to have him here and Polly you know can you tell everybody you know when when you got started blogging and um, how things have changed since you got into the Empower Network as far as how you use your blog and you know what it's done for your business awesome well, let me share something with you. <clears throat> I still don't have all the answers, you know? <laughs> when you ever. Yeah, yeah. So don't ever think that there is a point where you have to know everything because that point will never come. All right? Keep that in mind. But I started uh, online uh, pretty much ever since uh, the Internet got started. I've always been, a, you know, sort of a computer nerd. Uh, I remember growing up, I don't know, when I was yay high, well, when I was yay high, uh, that I wanted to be part of the science patrol from an old TV show called uh, Ultraman. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that. It's one of those esoteric, weird Japanese things, but, you know, growing up when I was like seven years old, I loved it. So I uh, went to school for uh, computer science and did all that stuff and been in radio and electronics and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I've always wanted to make money, okay? And that's kind of why I went through the whole education route and, and wanted to learn the skills to make money and get on Wall Street and, you know, ride in limos every day and, and eat high-powered lunches. But... For some reason, that stuff you see in the movies just doesn't happen. I don't know, you know, maybe it's a conspiracy. <clears throat> but uh, lo and behold, I had all this technical knowledge, and I was thinking, you know, there's got to be a way to make money legally. Now, you know, I have friends that were telling me all kinds of stuff. Well, you can do this, and you can do that, and credit card scams and all that, and I told them, no, it's all right. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I learned that there were people who were posting content online on the internet and we're making money through the sale of ads <laughs> right next to that content 
And I thought, huh, that's a novel idea. So around 2000 and want to say four, I started to build my first blog. Now, uh, was it a success? No, of course not. <laughs> uh, was it a complete waste of time? No, because I learned a lot. I lost uh, quite a bit of time, a lot of sleepless nights, and I lost uh, some money, but I learned a lot. And that was uh, 2003, 2004 when I started, so roughly 10 years. Now, I will tell you that uh, I do have a blog or two blogs that are still up and running today, believe it or not. Uh, so I'm kind of uh, blessed to have that ongoing, and that's been an ordeal. It's still an ordeal because uh, it needs constant management, you know, to keep, uh, keep it up. Or I can just let it wither on the vine and just die. But uh, I don't want to do that. It's been out there too long, and it's getting too much organic search engine traffic. Uh, but how has it changed? Wow. Well, <clears throat> just take a look at the news. Uh, I'm sure you've heard uh, last year there's this, what, 22-year-old kid that sold this thing called Tumblr uh, to a large company for $1.6 billion, $1.3 billion dollars. And all it is is a blogging platform, and it's the ugliest blog I've ever seen. <laughs> it, it's it's uh, it's amazing, but the concept is simple. People can get an account within like three seconds. You know, name, email address, boom, it creates an account, and you can begin posting content. Uh, that it sh that should tell you where the industry is heading. Uh, people want to be able to blast. Uh, short, highly relevant, and highly targeted bits of information out to the masses. And that's why companies like Twitter have exploded. You know, Twitter is, what, 140 characters. You know, uh, when I was taking English classes and, you know, elementary school and high school, you know, if it wasn't three or four paragraphs, you know, you got a, a smack on the wrist and, and was told to go finish your work. So, you know, that's telling you that society is looking for the meat, okay? If I want to read War and Peace, you know, a book this thick, I'll buy it and go home and read it in my spare time. But when I'm on the Internet or on one of these things here, these uh, mobile devices, uh, I want to get my information in short blurbs that's quick, relevant, give me a picture if necessary, and move on, okay? That's where the market's headed. That's where that's where the focus is. So uh, we have to change with that. You know, if we're going to be successful in business, we have to give the market what it wants. Does that make sense, Jeff? Oh, absolutely, no doubt about it. Well, having said that, the question that all of us as entrepreneurs ask is, what does the market want? <laughs> you know, well, what do they want so I can give it to them so I can get paid, right? You know, that's why we're here. We're all now. Uh, am I correct in assuming that everybody here is an Empower Jeff? I believe we do have some guests with us today. Okay. Um, okay. But you know, they're either they're either looking at Empower or they've been in Empower for a little bit of time. Okay. Okay. Well, not a problem because uh, I think today we're going to share with people who are looking at Empower the uh, the the power <laughs> of what Empower provides us. You know, because uh, they've provided us a service and an environment that will allow us to tap into that, that entire market. Plus, all the back-end training and all that stuff is there for you as well. Um, but what I really want to key up on today is, uh, you know, when we go into, uh, I guess what, what I want to share is going into how people can use their blogging platforms. And it's not just Empower Network. We're just going to talk about the blogging industry as a whole sure. uh, and how to use this thing called blogging to, you know, get traffic, uh, build a readership, a following, uh, and develop sales, you know, and what we call in our industry conversions, you know. And, Paul, you mentioned your other blogs, and, you know, we're talking to some people that are looking at Empower Network, and, you know, could you touch on, you know, what it takes as far as time, knowledge, and money to you know, host and um, maintain, you know, a really professional looking blog um, outside of Empower Network and the 
you know, some of the benefits for, especially for somebody getting started that doesn't know anything about designing a blog or what it costs to, you know, have a professional blog to the Empower Network blogging platform? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I tell people all the time, people that know me personally, like yourself, and people that have been around me in my former career, I uh, used to work in finance at uh, several large Fortune 500 and 100 companies, and people say, you know, I see you online now or I see you at the store, why do you dress like this? I'm always in a ball cap, you know, t-shirt looking real ratty, and that's for one simple reason. I used to go to work every day in either business casual or full-blown suit, tie, coat, all that stuff. I feel you there, my friend, because I wore a uniform for almost yeah. 20 years. Yeah, yeah, I've done that too. <laughs> well, my uniform had stripes on it and a name tag, but uh, we won't go that <laughs> far back. Uh, and people say, well, why do you dress like that? Because on the surface, uh, if you look at a couple of my blog properties, uh, uh, one blog I will tell you the niche that it's in is in real estate. And in that industry, you have to provide a persona of being top-notch, top quality. But the amount of work and time that it takes, if I was to dress like I was in an office working on this top-notch, high-quality website, it would be terrible. It would be simply terrible <laughs> because, uh, you know, I work on one website. It would take me 12, 14 hours straight to get one or two modules right, uh, I would be on the phone with, with developers trying to get this stuff done. I don't do graphics and pictures and stuff, so I would have to hire somebody to do that for me. Uh, if there's a problem, if the site goes down at 2 a.m., well, I'm a small business, so guess who has to fix it? Me. <laughs> so why do I dress like this? Because it's a ton and tons and tons of work to run a blog successfully. You can ask any of the other major bloggers like uh, John Chow. Look him up, johnchow.com. He's awesome. Uh, uh, Joel Shoemaker, Shoemaker. Uh, they call him Shoe Money. So just do a search for shoemoney.com. His blog is up there. But he'll tell you it is hard, grueling work. Let's talk about the financial aspect of all that. Um, let's see. Uh, getting a domain name is pretty easy. Thank you to companies like GoDaddy, you know, 99 cents, $10, whatever. Uh, they'll get it, manage it, you can register it, and that's done. Then you have what's known as hosting. you got to have a server or a piece of computer hardware that the website has to sit on. Then if you ever grow your blog into a big website, you have this thing called bandwidth or network issues, meaning you don't want your site to come up really slow. That's very bad for a website. It'll kill your website if when people go to yourblog.com and it takes them 10, 15 seconds to load? No. <laughs> no, that's a no-no. Uh, by the way, bandwidth costs money and that's probably one of the most expensive components of running a website is your bandwidth, having a big network, a fast network to sit it on. Then, like I said, you got all your developers, programmers, and network folks that are going to fix your problems and help build up the site. Then, guess what? We haven't even gotten the content yet. Where are you going to get your content from? You're going to write it yourself. You're going to hire writers to do it. Uh, I would highly recommend that you don't plagiarize and steal other <laughs> websites' material. That'll get you shut down pretty quick. Uh, so it, it's it's just a uh, a lot a lot of work. And I tell people, if you're going to produce a blog outside of Empower Network, first have your goal for that blog. How big do you want it to be? What's your purpose for the blog? Are you trying to get buyers? Are you just trying to get readers? Are you trying to, I don't know, build a following for a, a, a nonprofit? Or are you trying to get people to purchase some product or service of yours? Write that out and then begin mapping out all the resources that it's going to take to get you to that point. If you want to sell a million widgets in your widget company and you're going to use your blog to do it, well, you're going to have to figure out how many people are going to have to read that blog to get to how many people are going to click on the link to get to how many people are going to equal that million people that's going to buy your widget. It's a lot of an analysis in the background, and it takes money and time and effort to do that. So, like I said, some of the websites that I've built 
haven't gone much of anywhere, you know, over the years, and I've built several websites, but my blogs, I have like one or two blogs that still run, and it does pretty well, but the amount of work that it takes to keep it up at that level, because, uh, you know, people are fickle. They'll like one thing one day, and then they'll stop clicking on it the next. <laughs> you know, and that's just the way it is. So you have to keep constantly giving people what they want. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, and you mentioned how much, or I mean, you mentioned that bandwidth costs us, mo you know, costs us money mm -hmm. if we're running our own blog. And I, I've got a blog outside of Empower Network as well. And you know, could you just touch on you know what a popular blog and what it would cost us to actually host a blog as compared to the twenty-five dollars a month that it cost us with Empower Network? Uh, oh, yeah you know, to, to run something like that, because I, I don't think people believed me last week when I touched on that. <laughs> yeah, people don't believe me either until I show them a bill from, uh, you know, Comcast or, or uh, Net Solutions or whoever I'm using. Uh, to put it plainly, uh, a website the size of Empower Network would probably run maybe six figures a month and I'm not, I'm not kidding, that's a one with five zeros behind it, just to, uh, you know, ha keep it up and going. That's including, like I said, you can't put it all on one computer. Normally a site of the size of EmpowerNetwork.com is going to be in a room full of computers about this big and about that thick. You know, they're called one U or one unit servers, and there'll be racks and racks, and there'll probably be about 50 to 100 of them in a room, uh, then that room gets hot, so you have to cool it and you know all that stuff. I'm not gonna you know bore you with all that jazz. Then uh, the people who can gouge us, and I, I, well, I, don't, I shouldn't say gouge. You know, it's just you know me being you know you know me being me. But uh, there are not that many providers out there that can give you a connection to the internet that's fast enough to do it. See, people think when they get an internet connection, they're thinking. Oh, um, I have it through AT&T. My my cable provider is giving me internet, and it's giving me so much down and so much up, and it does great. Yeah, well, when you have ten, twenty thousand people per second coming into your network to see your website, that little piece of internet bandwidth or connection is not big enough. Which means you're going to have bottlenecks. Which means the site is going to load slowly, which will absolutely kill your business. So. Um, what I've personally paid, uh, I think right now, uh, my hosting, just the people that are managing the, the servers that get my website on it, I'm paying six, seven hundred bucks a month just for that for me for one of my websites. You know, that's, uh, yeah, that's, it's probably going to go up <laughs> in a minute. You know, that's another issue that I'm dealing with. Uh, plus, the internet bandwidth that they're charging me. It's probably another four or five hundred bucks. So you know, just to run the website, almost fourteen hundred bucks a month, taxes and stuff included. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and and that's a small site. So you know, you know, just try to change your paradigm a little bit. If you're talking about a website, we're not talking about you know a quick uh, something that you're gonna do. Like back in the day, we used to do. Uh, before Facebook, you put up a site and put your picture up there, and you know we'd link to each other, and it was cool. You know we thought we were doing something, but uh, the reason why sites like Tumblr and Facebook and Twitter, and the list goes on and on, MySpace even. I just got an email from MySpace. They're uh, trying to come back in, into the into the world of uh, being relevant, I guess. Uh, but when you're talking about sites of that magnitude, where you got millions of users those costs can get extremely expensive. Absolutely. Hey, Polly, I know you're anxious to get going with your presentation, and we're all anxious to hear it. I've got just one more question for you okay. before I let you just tear this thing up. Sure. And last week, I, I haven't looked this week, but I think last week I touched on um, what the Alexa rating for or ranking for Empower Network means and I looked at it, it they were somewhere in the 500 in the world and around 200 in the United States and and in the in the form of juice for our blogs um, yeah. you know what does that Alexa rating mean to uh, or ranking mean to us using the empower network blogs as opposed to starting from scratch 
Oh, yeah, that, that means quite a bit, and I just pulled it up while you were talking. Uh, in the U.S., we are number 266 out of millions of websites, hundreds of millions of websites, and in the world, Empower Network is about 522 out of, I don't know, about a billion websites. Uh, what does that mean? For anyone who wants to use Empower Network as a platform, well, that means that when you have a website that is that popular, and Alexa, that's all they do is they rank popularity among websites, okay? Uh, when you can make it into the top 10,000, you're doing pretty good. To make it into the top 1,000, you're, like, awesome. To make it to the top 500, you're doing something special. And what that means is that your search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo, and the list goes on and on, those search engines are going to say, wow, this website must be doing something right, okay? What are they doing? They're getting a lot of traffic. They're getting a lot of links to other websites. Those links build something called authority, okay? If I put, you know, bigpollysblog.com up yesterday, nobody's going to know who I am. It's just It just started and I'm getting two hits a day. So when the search engines are trying to figure out who to uh, list in their uh, search engine rankings. And a ranking is simply this. When you type in uh, a search uh, query, I'm looking for something. What is a blog? Click search. There's an algorithm that Google and Yahoo and Bing and the rest of them have that says, okay, I have a bunch of answers to this question. Which one am I going to prioritize above the others? Now, Google and all the search engines will look to a website that's getting a lot of traffic, that has a lot of backlinks, that's getting a lot of views, and it's going to say, hmm, that website must have more authority over this, you know, uh, polysblog.com thing that just came on the, on the map, you know, today with it's getting two hits a day. So what that means is that you're going to get more natural or organic traffic from the search engines because they're going to put that answer up there above all the other stuff out there. So when you have websites that have high Alexa rank and also are getting a lot of what I call Google love, you're going to have a recipe for a lot of natural traffic where people are going to be asking questions of the search engines and they're going to be presenting your website with the answer, provided that you're providing the relative content. Because you're already sitting on an authoritative website, which is EmpowerNetwork.com. Okay, Polly. Well, I know you've I know you've taken some time and prepared some great content, so I'm sure. gonna stop bugging you. and I'm just gonna let it rip, and okay. you know, towards the end, maybe we can uh, do a little question and answer. Okay. Cool. Cool. Not a problem. Um, I will tell you, I'm a little not used to Google Hangouts. When I do uh, Google Blast, I'm just you know talking, and then that's it. So if folks have questions or anything. Uh, uh, you got you and Beth or somebody's monitoring uh, questions. Yeah, they're going to be. I, I need everybody to answer questions on the thread at www.facebook.com forward slash team mission probable. All one word, no spaces. And, uh, you know, we're going to get to them at the end. Sweet, sweet. That's going to work. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen if you don't I'm mind. I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off so that I'm not flickering back and forth. So let okay. it go. Okay. All right. Uh, this is awesome. I guess I have a question for all of y'all. How are y'all doing? <laughs> Start screen share. Cool. Can you see my screen, Jeff or Beth? Absolutely. Perfect. I kind of chose this. Uh, man, I, I've shared this with you uh, yesterday, Jeff, that I lost a hard drive. Uh, and I lost uh, a lot of uh, good content and still upset about that, but uh, what can you do besides pick up and move on, right? And as I was building this, I saw this picture, and the background of this picture kind of let me, uh, let me uh, uh, sort of get, get back into why I'm doing what I'm doing, okay? Why blog? Well, this picture to me symbolizes just a uh, lifestyle, you know. It's just a nice big house out in the countryside, not a care in the world. You know, it's sort of grayed out. It's not real bright. 
and it just sort of reminds me of a lazy Sunday afternoon when I used to go over to my grandmother's house for dinner. So <clears throat> that's kind of why we did that. But uh, who is this guy that, that's talking? You know, just to reintroduce myself, I know, Jeff, I've known you and Beth for a while. You guys are awesome, and uh, I'm so appreciative of y'all inviting me here. But uh, like I said, I um, was recently able to retire from corporate America at 36 years of age. I'm excited about that still, last year. And uh, I've been, uh, you know, in, in corporate America, I did uh, technology stuff, and, and I finished my career in finance. And, uh, boy, you learn quite a bit about, uh, about uh, you know, corporate America and, and business uh, from finance because you see where the dollars go and how they manage the dollars. And some people get paid, some people don't, and, and there's reasons why. But what that did for me was that wanted to focus me on to what my real wants and dreams and goals were, and that's simply to get out of there and call my own shots because I enjoyed what I did, but... Honestly, if I didn't feel like going to a meeting at 7 a.m., I didn't have a choice. If I wanted a paycheck, I had to be there. And me and my personality, I just thought that sucked. If <laughs> you pardon my French. And I just had to get out of there. So that's kind of why I look towards home-based business as an option to get me out of there. Um, I was blessed to find Empower Network uh, 2011. I still remember that phone call that my sponsor, Alex Z, called uh, that phone call that, that uh, he gave me um, was, I believe, it was November 1st that night, uh, 2011, and you know it was like 10 o'clock at night. And when you have this heavy Russian accent calling you long distance from New York at 10 o'clock at night, and I'm laying in bed reading, you know, you better pay attention because uh, you never know what's going to happen. But uh, you know, one of my philosophies that uh, team member actually put that uh, picture in the bottom right hand corner. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. She actually came up with that, and I thought that was so awesome. And uh, I had that as my uh, Facebook uh, header image for a while now. Um, so you know, I have to challenge myself to change myself because if you don't change something about yourself, whether that's increasing a skill, changing your mindset. It doesn't matter what it is, but if you don't change, then you can't expect anything else around you to change, right? So in order to change yourself, you have to challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to change. So that's kind of, you know, uh, my philosophy there. And uh, I tell you what, it's working out pretty good, you know, even though I'm still pretty new in this game. I've only been in for about six and a half years, right? <laughs> so what are we going to talk about today? <clears throat> Blogging basics, okay? I'm not going to... Uh, start at the bare minimum and you know okay uh, blog is this and how to blog and uh, you know grammar you know we're all adults here we should know our grammar rules all that stuff so we're gonna blow through that pretty quickly I'm gonna cover a few blogging tools I think are important for us to be successful and I'm also gonna give you a few ninja tricks to get traffic to your blog because honestly you can write all the best content in the world if no one is looking at it doesn't mean a thing you know it's sort of like if a tree falls in the wood and anybody hear it well yeah the tree heard it but do we care <laughs> and we'll do a, a quick Q&A session at the end okay let's talk about history uh, I'm gonna bore you no I'm, I'm kidding Blogging started off, well, if you don't know, you know, the word blog is actually a, uh, a, an amalgamation of two words, uh, web logging. And that came from uh, an old standard or an old process that was done, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. And in this industry, 10 years is like ancient, you know, because things move so fast. But uh, it's an amalgamation between two words, web logging. And all that was a systems administrator, guys, would keep a running tally of things that they would do to a particular computer system or a network and they would keep a tally in a log. Okay, uh, Those logs were began to be stored on networks so that multiple people can access them to see what's going on and then uh, with uh, internet web technology uh, those logs turned into cool web pages that you can interact with and somebody back in the day I believe one of the WordPress guys came up and said uh, you know what, uh, we could probably take this, build some software around it, and allow everybody to just 
make a running tally of what they want to talk about. And, you know, we always have to make things snazzy and cool and hip, so web logging turned into blogging. So there you go. Hope that didn't bore you too much. <clears throat> but why do we do it? Honestly, we're here to make money. And if you notice, just take a look around, about 85% could be higher now. 85% of all your major companies and corporations worldwide have a blog, okay? Just go to any website, GM, uh, McDonald's has a blog, doesn't matter the large companies out there, they all have blogs, so success leaves clues, remember that. If a company thinks that they need to keep a running tally of content and things that could be important to their customers, uh, if, they, if they use it as a way to engage their customers, so why not do it? And that's why blogs have gotten so popular over the last five, ten years. And honestly, with the sale of Tumblr and uh, with what Facebook is doing, they're expanding some things. Blogging is here to stay for the foreseeable future. As a matter of fact, I believe more websites are going to be converted to just pure blogs. You're not going to have your old school websites where it's, you know, a navigation bar at the top and whatever else is going to be a nice blog and you'll have you know call to action buttons within the blog so stay tuned but why do we do it well it's kinda cheap now reason I put relatively in parentheses at the end of it is because what me and Jeff just got finished discussing was if you run your own blog and that blog begins to have success it can become extraordinarily expensive okay however if you use a platform like Empower Network, it's pretty cheap. It's what, 25 bucks a month? <laughs> Set up and everything, customer service, technology, all that's done for you. Uh, if you use a free service like Blogger, Tumblr, or WordPress.com, it's free. And yet again, they provide all that stuff. Now, there's a caveat to using those free uh, platforms, and, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Blogging builds your brand, okay? That's another reason why large companies like Coca-Cola and Motorola have blogs. It's a way to engage their customers or potential customers, and those potential customers or current customers, as they engage, they are constantly getting feedback from the company of who they are. So it's building their brand within the eyes of their customers, okay? That's why it's so important to continuously get fresh content out there. It also creates a following. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, in this industry, in internet marketing, one-hit wonders are few and far between. There was a time years ago where you could blast something out, whether it's an email or throw up a web page, and the sales will start coming in because it was new. Nowadays, like I was talking about earlier with mobile devices, people aren't just sitting on their phone looking for new websites to pop up, okay? As a matter of fact, uh, I have a friend who just purchased a domain name because building a new domain name would have been a whole lot harder, you know, to get the uh, traffic up. So they went out and sought out uh, an older domain name that was already out there, purchased it, I think they paid like $7,000 just for, you know, whatever.com so they can already get the, uh, the jump the gun on getting traffic to their website. So, you know, as people, you know, and as a matter of fact, to back that up, there's a statistic that as of 2000, I want to say 12, more mobile devices were purchased than PCs, okay? And a mobile device is a phone, tablet, whatever, but... Mobile devices are finally outpaced desktop PCs, okay? And laptops are slowly going away. As you can tell, they're getting smaller. They're getting, you know, uh, oh, it's, it's the iPad now, you know. So laptops are slowly going away now. So with all of this mobile technology, you're not going to see people standing on the street for 20 minutes just searching out looking for the latest and greatest cool website. They're going to look for a trusted service like a Facebook to update their news feed with a particular web property that's out there and they're going to click on it they're going to go straight to the content that they're looking for or the content that they want so keep that in mind 
unless you are good at providing that content, identifying uh, your audience and giving them what they want, it's going to be harder and harder to make sales. So how do we get around that? We create a following. You build an avatar in your mind of who your perfect uh, customer is going to be. Then you begin creating content on your blog that's specifically for that avatar. Okay? And as people who matches that avatar begin hitting your website or your blog, they're going to begin that engagement and they're going to build that following for you. And after your following becomes sales. Let's talk about some tools that you're going to need. <clears throat> see what kind of time we got here. Tools. If you're going to blog and be successful, you're going to need a platform. I don't care what that is. Personally, I, like I said, I run my own websites, but for anyone who does not have the skill set or the financial means for that, I tell them to use either a free platform or hey, Purchase and Power Network, I'm in the business, so I'm going to go for the sale, right? And I have no shame in, in telling you that, you know, and you shouldn't either. Uh, after the platform you get set up and use, you need content. That is key. That content has to be relevant. That content has to be uh, uh, useful. And that content needs to be fairly fresh, okay? And we'll talk about that in a minute. Next, you need multimedia. Guys, uh, another statistic for you. According to Cisco Systems, that uh, much of the Internet runs on, Cisco makes networking products. I believe they say 70 to 80 percent of all Internet traffic is like video, <laughs> video and pictures. Multimedia. If you're not adding pictures and movies and videos in your blog, you're missing the boat. And it's so easy to do. I believe 90% of all, or just about all the platforms out there allow you to embed a YouTube video quite easily. It's as simple as grabbing a link and pasting it in there. So you need multimedia in your content. And you also need methods of syndication. And we'll talk more in depth about syndication in a minute. But syndication, uh, as a uh, definition, is your ability to get your content pushed out into the masses. That's all. And last but very not least, I probably should have started with this one, is you need discipline. Discipline is key because if you are not providing your content on a fairly regular basis, then you are going to have a tough time building your following, okay, or your readership reason for that is because there is so much content being created every day on the internet. <clears throat> it would blow your mind if you knew how many new web pages or how many new words are being created and posted on some website somewhere across the world every single minute of the day. So with all of that noise, if you will, how are you going to penetrate that and get directly to your customer? Initially, it's going to be the sheer volume of your information because the more content that you're pushing out there, think of it as uh, uh, the uh, swimming, okay? The more you move the water away from the front of you and push it to the side towards the back of you, the further you're going to be propelled forward, okay? If you only do that once, you'll probably sink or you'll just float right there. You're not going to move anywhere. But if you're constantly moving your arms, you're going to push through all of that water, a.k.a. you know, content or Internet noise, to get closer to your goal, okay? Uh, what I recommend is blog every day if you can. Now, there's going to be different levels to that. If you can uh, hire people to produce content, go for it. If you can't, uh, but you uh, have very specific or very esoteric content that I guess a small number of people are going to be really involved with, a sort of a very targeted niche, then you can get away with posting content every couple of weeks, okay, because your audience is pretty small, which means that the people providing content is pretty small, so you're not going to get as much noise to drown out your content, if that makes sense. Uh, me personally, I try to shoot for a minimum two blog posts a week. 
uh, worst case scenario, you need to do at least two to four blog posts a month. Okay, <clears throat> if you're not willing to do that and stick to that, you lack discipline, and we can't really guarantee your success in blogging. <laughs> you know, to put it bluntly, right? Let's talk about uh, platforms. WordPress has a platform that is free, WordPress.com, and they also have a platform where you can download their software and install it and set it up and manage it yourself. And that's WordPress.org. Uh, you can, you know, you can just, you know, Google search it or Bing search it, and uh, they'll give you the website. It'll be close to the top, one or two. Uh, download the software. If you're technically inclined, you can get it installed and set up in less than an hour. And you know, bada bing, bada boom, you have a running blog. Okay, Blogger, which incidentally was purchased by Google. <laughs> Don't you see that uh, the big guys see value in blogging? Uh, they purchased Blogger, and it is a very fast blog. And the reason why it's still one of the ones that I recommend uh, that uh, people use is simply because Google purchased it. So whenever Google is, uh, you know, searching out for authority sites and all that stuff, and you have your content on, you know, Polly'sLittleBlog.com versus a blogger website, you know, Polly.Blogger.com, which one do you think is going to rank higher in the search engines? Obviously, the blogger website. So I tell people, if you're just starting out, if you want some fairly quick search engine love, get a Blogger account. It's real easy. You know, half the people in the world have a Gmail account, so just go to Blogger, log into Gmail, then up in the address bar, type blogger.com, and it'll, you know, walk you through all that stuff. And, of course, Empower Network. Empower Network is extremely powerful because they've built out a niche for themselves, and that niche is simply to help people uh, in the home base industry make money. And there's a couple of ways that they do that. One, Empower Network has its own compensation structure that's extraordinarily powerful. Uh, and two, the products that they have, the blogging platform or viral blogging system being one, is extremely powerful for people that are in business that want to get content out there, okay, on a high authority website that is uh, home-based business driven, okay? Uh, they also have an application that you can download on your smartphone that allows you to blog mobily. It's pretty cool. You can, uh, I believe, you pay for a video hosting service and you can pull up your Android or iPhone and shoot a video and, you know, a few taps later, you have a new blog post on your website full with your video that you can grab that link and syndicate it. It's very powerful. And two things will happen. Uh, one, you're getting your content out there, so you're going to build up your business. And two, when people go to your Empower Network branded website, if you so choose to leave the branded on there, you're going to build curiosity, and guess what? People will purchase that product from you. So it's a win-win situation. So those are the three that I kind of recommend and go with, uh, uh, WordPress, Blogger, and Empower Network. Now, there are a boatload of other solutions out there, Tumblr being one. I tell you, Tumblr has a bit of a learning curve. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan, but it is fast. It's very efficient at what it does. I think it's ugly, but, you know, hey, uh, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? Um, but it's still a property that does get a lot of search engine traffic. So I tell people, hey, uh, get multiple accounts, you know, get your WordPress.com account, get your Blogger.com account, get your EmpowerNetwork.com account, and you can also uh, uh, forge your own domain uh, to an Empower Network blog as well. Uh, get you a Tumblr account, Squidoo, TypePad, all of the above. And there's a reason for that. I'll get to that in a second as well. Uh, Squidoo is an interesting website because what Squidoo does is allows you to put up a single web page that is targeted to a particular topic. Squidoo it was called a lens. Uh, how they came up with that, I'm not sure. Their uh, their mascot is like a, a uh, what do you call it, an octopus or squid, 
and they have one of the eyes is looking at you, and when you build a page, it's called a squidoo lens. So I built a couple of lenses, you know, and they're still floating around out there. It's still an option for you for getting content out there on the internet, but it's not going to get as much search engine traffic as the big three up top, and even Tumblr, as a matter of fact. TypePad is another uh, free solution. TypePad.com, you can go there, get an account set up, and start blogging. Uh, TypePad has actually been around longer than Blogger, and I believe longer than WordPress as well. So it's sort of like the granddaddy of them all, and um, you know it still works. It's still a free solution, and it's still an option for you to get your content out to the world. <clears throat> now, what do we what do we need to uh, get content? Here's another tool: use the news. Turn on the news. Uh, see what's going on in your community. See what's going on in your business. Uh, have conversations with uh, influential people in your industry and take that information and share it with people. Hey, this is what I just learned from so and so. Read. You know, it's, you know, as a society, I don't think we read as much as we used to, you know, thanks to TV and movies and smartphones. But read books. They will turn your mind on and they will get your creative juices flowing. You'll read a paragraph or a couple of sentences and you can write a blog post just off of that. Attend seminars that's very important because you're going to be in a room with like-minded people people that are in a seminar to learn about X okay when you're around that energy you'll begin to pick up different perspectives of about uh, whatever you're writing about so when we go to an Empower Network event and I meet say a Beth and she's talking to me about uh, about uh, how she's building her team offline you know well you know, after we get them in, we have, you know, uh, 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 conference calls with our folks, or, you know, whatever. I'm thinking, huh, that's a novel idea. I never thought about that. And I take that and I can go write a blog post about it. I uh, hope you don't mind me using you as my example, Beth. <laughs> uh, but no, make sure true. that, <laughs> okay, make sure that you are interesting because you are interesting. Like a good friend of mine used to say, and I think he still says it, there are enough yous out there to make you rich. You can't attract everybody. You're not going to please everybody, so don't even try. Just be the best you you can be, and guess what? The ones that are attracted to you, that are interested in you, will come. They will become part of your following, okay? And from there, you can make sales. So share you. Share your own individual perspectives. Share your own thoughts. Share your own ideas. Share your own jokes. If you have a different sense of humor than most, like I do, guess what? Over time, after you would upset thousands of people, you'll find 10 or 20 that will laugh their head off every time you post a stupid joke on Facebook. Guess what? That's your audience. Share you. After you do all of that and you build your, your uh, content using those tools, you have to syndicate. So what is syndication? We said that syndication is merely a way to get your information out to the masses, push it as deep into the masses as possible. And in this scenario, I used the David Letterman show as an example. I don't know why it popped in my head when I was writing this, uh, this uh, presentation last night, but... Uh, the David Letterman show, um, we're, we're all familiar with his show on CBS. I think it started on NBC years ago. But if you think about the process, you know, he's in California somewhere, New York somewhere, <clears throat> and I'm in Tennessee. When I turn my TV on, the signal that I'm watching of David Letterman is not coming straight from California or New York. It's going, the CBS cameras are taking it and they are rebroadcasting it out to their affiliates okay their affiliates we have one here in Memphis uh, our CBS affiliate then picks up the signal or the tape and rebroadcasts it here those affiliates are called syndicates you know they are syndicating the David Letterman show all across the nation and across the world I hope that makes sense you want to do the exact same thing with your blog content 
you want to find syndicators to give them your content and further push your content out deeper into the internet. Okay. Some other tools. Use social media. Social media is the hottest thing on the internet. It has been for two or three years and it will be for the next five to ten years until something new comes up. Use social media. I recommend you use the big four. There are hundreds of other social media sites. Uh, use them all if you can, but focus on the main four and uh, you'll be okay. <laughs> there is enough people on these four here that can make you a ton of money. Facebook, obviously. Twitter, still. Yes, Twitter. And we'll talk about that in a second. Google Plus. Why Google Plus? It's in the name. You know, I'm used to people interacting, so when I ask a question, I kind of pause, like, give me the answer. That's all right. Google Plus is owned by Google. So when you post content through Google Plus, guess what's going to get more search engine results or love, if you will? It's going to rank higher in the search engines because when people go to Google as the number one search engine and type in, uh, what did Paula eat for dinner last night, and you post your blog post on Google Plus, your stuff's going to pop up higher in the search engines. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is very popular, but I put an asterisk by it because you have to be very careful. LinkedIn is a professionally driven site. It's for people uh, expanding businesses, looking for work, posting jobs about work. It's very uh, business centric. So you don't want to post a lot of unrelated content out there. You don't want to post videos of uh, uh, Miley Cyrus dancing on stage and stuff because it's going to turn a lot of people off. That's not why they're there. You know, you go to Facebook and MySpace for that kind of stuff. When you're on LinkedIn, your content needs to be very business specific, very professional specific and focused. Okay, That's why I put an asterisk there. So be careful when you're posting content on LinkedIn. IBO Toolbox is a tool, and I think we talked about this uh, last night, Jeff. It's a tool that you and I both use, and I've used IBO Toolbox for about a year or two, and consistently I get people from IBO Toolbox that are looking at my content. It is a very good tool to use, IBOToolbox.com. Better Networker. Now, Better Networker is uh, specific to our industry as far as... Uh, Network marketing, multi-level marketing, internet marketing, home-based business, okay? Again, that's a website where you don't want to post a lot of pictures of Miley Cyrus dancing on stage and a lot of silly stuff like that because it's very specific. So you want to speak about the benefits of your programs. You want to speak about how you can help other networkers in their business you want to provide very relevant content that is going to help other people in that environment. But Better Networker, now Better Networker is a paid service, <clears throat> excuse me, you can get a free account and you can post some content for free, but if you want to leverage the entire population of Better Networker, um, you can purchase an upgrade to it. I, I'm not sure how much it is, I think it's like uh, 27 or $97 a month or something like that, but it is a paid service above and beyond the free stuff that they give you. Make sense? More tools. Empire Avenue is a very cool website. It's different. Empire Avenue is based around uh, doing jobs for people, okay? Uh, I'm going to take a step out and go to Empire Avenue. EmpireAvenue.com and kind of show you what this is all about. Uh, Beth, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Holly, you're good. Cool, cool. Thank you. Uh, okay. All right. The whole point of Empower Empire Net uh, Avenue, excuse me, <laughs> Freudian slip. Empire Avenue is to build a community of people that are willing to do missions for you. Okay, sounds exciting. Well, not really. <laughs> These missions include liking posts, 
sharing posts, uh, commenting on your posts. And in order to do that, you earn credits by doing these missions. And you can even purchase the credits, if I'm not mistaken, right, uh, Jeff? Okay, <laughs> we'll move on. Uh, you can even purchase credits uh, or stock or whatever uh, and, uh, and, and get people to uh, execute on these missions for you. Uh, as your social media properties get more and more popular, uh, like, a, like a regular stock in a company, you get a share price of your account. And as your social media properties get more and more popular, your share price goes up. When you have a higher share price, that means that uh, more people will see you as an authority on Empire Avenue, and they will be more apt to do missions with you and for you and request that you miss do missions for them because when a uh, higher authority account is liking and sharing uh, content on, on your accounts, then that means that their content is going to shoot out further across the Internet <clears throat> or deeper into the uh, social media networks. So keep that in mind. It's, it's not complicated, but it does take a bit of a learning curve. Uh, take your time when you're going through here. Uh, I highly recommend going through the community and, uh, you know, reading what people have, joining a community, and starting your own community to build up people that are willing to uh, do missions for you, okay? Uh, once you work Empire Avenue, leaders like, uh, I guess it's okay to name drop, I believe, Chris Rushlow, and uh, I believe my sponsor, Alex Zubarev, used Empire Avenue to get a, a lot of good traffic to their blog posts by leveraging Empire Avenue to get people to carry out these missions and drive traffic through the social media network. So Empire Avenue is a powerful solution. Uh, I believe that there is training in the back of Empower Network for those that are part of that uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's in the 15K formula. So if you don't have that product, purchase it and go through there as uh, they walk you through Empire Avenue. Yeah, Paul, if you don't mind me jumping in, um, I believe it's uh, lesson number two in the 15K formula, and it's Chris Record who does a phenomenal job of showing exactly how to use that resource. And I want to make the point real quick. I've made it before, but I think it's important to cover that a lot of these resources do have affiliate programs associated with them, so it's very important that you get with the person that brought you here to get those resources because, you know, we all use these tools as extra sources of income. It, you know, at least for me, I don't use it so much as an income but to purchase advertising for my business. So it's really important that we keep the lines of sponsorship solid uh, when we're using all these other tools. So get with the person that brought you here after this um, to make sure that you get the proper link to use to sign up for those. Sorry, Polly. No problem. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. Uh, when you keep those lines solid, you build a stronger team. I agree 110% with that. And thank you. That was Chris uh, Record, not Chris Rushlow. Thank you. Um, so Empire Avenue is a powerful resource. I recommend that you use it. Social Adder is another one that I just learned about, played around with it. Uh, briefly, and uh, I like it. <laughs> I don't know enough about it to do a full training on it, but I will uh, tell you to get with uh, your sponsorship and get a link from them and learn how to use Social Ladder. Social Monkey has been around a while, uh, and Jeff, you told me that you're still using it and it's powerful. Uh, I'm putting it back on the list and I'm doing more testing with it. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and Social Monkey is uh, M-O-N-K-E-E, -E, and Social Adder is A-D-R. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Actually, I can change that on the fly. Cool. Is that right? You got it. Awesome. DocStock. <clears throat> DocStock is a website that allows you to syndicate written content or documents across the internet. Why is this a powerful tool that I've used and got tons of traffic from? It's real simple. 
you can take your blog posts that you've spent your time, your sweat equity, and your knowledge to create. You can take that blog post, repurpose it by creating a doc stock document, which then creates a new document based on your current uh, based on your current content. And now you have a doc stock link that you can begin to share again. Okay, now a lot of people are still used to paper. Okay, um, that's why PDF documents are still huge right now. Um, honestly, if there's a big document or a story or a big something I need to read, I like to print it out myself. You know, uh, for you know five or six paragraphs, I'll just read it on the screen. But for people that like me still like physical documents, you can repurpose your same content on a doc doc, and that's real simple to do. And no, it's not plagiarizing. And it will not hurt your search engine rankings if you reference your original uh, blog post, okay, <laughs> in your DocStock document. And now you have a document link from DocStock. How many times did I can say that today? Uh, that you can send out to people. Excuse me. Uh, that will allow them to print out your blog post and read it. Does that make sense? It's a powerful tool that I use for some of my best blog posts that I really want to push out there. Okay, uh, don't just do, you know, every single blog post like that way because if you're going to put it in print, it needs to be I don't know something special. If you understand what I mean by that, put your best content on DocStock. Okay, some of my earlier posts, there's no way I would put that stuff on DocStock. Some of my latest stuff that I spent, you know, a couple hours working on and, you know, got pictures and links to my stuff and, and I've, I've tested it and it converts. You know, I can send traffic to a blog of mine and people click the link and, yeah, you can take that content, repurpose it and put it on DocStock and send that link out and now people can print out your blog post and, and that has all your links and everything still intact. So it's a wonderful tool. Uh, because it's going to be on a different domain name, you're going to get more search engine love through backlinking. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about backlinking today, but honestly, that that's like an hour, two hour long discussion by itself. So I may have to save that for later. Or actually, uh, I'll put that in my ninety-seven dollar course. Uh, I'll be sent. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but DocStock is another tool that's extremely powerful. Yeah, I can definitely see this being a three or four part training. I had originally intended to get it done in two, but there's just so much to cover and it's so important. I think we're definitely gonna gonna do more, whether it's just me or whether it's both of us together, we're definitely gonna get it all covered. Hey, whatever you want, man, I'm here to serve. YouTube. Why do I have YouTube as a tool? Well you can repurpose your blog posts and put in a YouTube video. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Uh, if you have a tool called Camtasia, you can record your screen. I don't care what it is, a picture. Let's say you've written a blog post about uh, the new Corvette Stingray, okay, or the new Z06 that's being debuted next year. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, noticed, I like cars. <laughs> but if you write a blog post about the new Z06, you can have a picture or a video of the Z06 uh, on your screen as you're reading your blog post. Well, guess what? That is fresh content to YouTube, and it's further pushing your blog posts deeper into the Internet. You can hire somebody to uh, uh, read your, uh, your blog post and do it if you don't like your voice or whatever, or shoot a video, it doesn't matter. Or you can do it the other way around. Uh, if you're having problems with writing, but you are a very good speaker, shoot yourself a YouTube video and just talk for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. Then you can pay someone to transcribe your video. Guess what? You now have your blog post. So there's no shortage of ways of getting fresh content to your blog. Ezine articles. How many of us remember Ezine articles? Ezine articles has been around a while. 
there was a mad rush uh, that people were training, you know, some of the quote-unquote gurus were training their people. If you want to get traffic to your ClickBank products or whatever, if you want to get traffic to your website, write some e-sign articles and keyword enrich them and you'll get traffic. Well, that did work for about six months. And then when thousands and thousands of people were putting articles up there, the only people who were successful were the ones who could put out 10 to 50 articles, you know, every couple of days, you know. And that kind of shut out the rest of us because you had people up there that were hiring people in India to do nothing but churn out, you know, 10 articles a day, keyword enrich them, and post them on eZine articles. Plus, eZine has a premium level where you pay so much money and uh, your articles for the premium folks get listed first. So that also pushed a lot of the little people like us down and out of that game. However, eZine article still gets good traffic. So you can repurpose your blog posts, create an article, and put in eZine articles. <clears throat> okay? Let's use that same concept with PR Web. PR Web is a website that um, I'm going to show you guys what that is. Uh, PR Web. Uh, for those that don't know, is a website that allows you to provide uh, press releases, okay? Uh, you can do so many press releases for free, and of course there is a paid level to the service. Why is a press release powerful? Well, uh, Google has an entire section devoted to news. You see that option at the top? You go to Google, click News. These news feeds are coming from uh, all your major news uh, uh, aggregators like uh, Reuters and, and Associated Press and those big guys. And they're also coming from people that do independent press releases. If your press release is keyword enriched and it's relevant, Google will pick it up, okay? And there's some, there's a one or two other steps in that as far as getting Google to uh, notice that the uh, press release is out there, but we can talk about that later as well. Uh, once you get your press release up there, Google, if if you're lucky enough, it will get posted here towards the top. And a lot of people have this news feed coming through an RSS or a really simple syndication feed onto their websites or onto their phones or whatever, and so you can get a lot of traffic that way if uh, I guess all the stars align and you are very niche targeted, okay? Now let's uh, see what the news is about Empower Network. Okay, uh, the Jamaica Observer, no, 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 let's, uh, let's do a specific uh, search, here we go. Portuguese group heads to humanitarian mission, okay. That's cool. I'd like to read that. A young entrepreneur launches a new report. As you can see, this does get traffic. This does get traffic. And I bet you this Webwire person, I bet you that is an independent Empower Network affiliate. I bet you it is. Oh, yeah. Do I know what I'm doing or what? <laughs> you see that? That's a guy's link. <clears throat> and they're using WebWire. Huh. I may have to test WebWire, but I know PR Web works well. Okay? All right, social media. Social media is powerful because, like I said, it's the, the hottest thing right now on the Internet. And everybody has a social media account somewhere. There's over a billion people that have a Facebook account, okay? So it is a captive audience for a billion people to potentially see your content. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, the uh, CEO and founder of Facebook, <clears throat> uh, has come up with this concept called Edge Rank. I believe that it was in direct competition to Sergey Brands and Larry Page of Google since they came up with this idea called PageRank. Okay, PageRank is the secret algorithm that uh, that the Google guys created 
to rank content uh, according to relevancy and all other good stuff. And honestly, it works pretty doggone good. Okay, that's one of their secrets that they vow will never see the light of day. Kind of like Colonel Sanders' secret eleven spices recipe or whatever it is. Uh, uh, the Google guys keep that algorithm under lock and key. <clears throat> And the reason for that, you'll have people that can reverse engineer it, and you'll always see, you know, Joe Blow Hacker's website always on the page and uh, uh, number one, the first link of Google, regardless of the search. So, you know, they have to protect that that intellectual property. But this whole edge rank uh, concept was developed by the Facebook guys, and it's simply uh, an algorithm that helps determine in your news feed, what's going to be listed first, second, third, okay? Much like the Google search engine rankings, you want the Facebook news feed rankings. Have you noticed that when you log into Facebook and you're looking at your news feed, you're going to see content that's a little bit more relevant to two things, you and the people that you are connected to, okay? I'm going to see stuff from Empower Network a lot quicker in my news feed on Facebook than I would say McDonald's okay or I'm gonna see stuff from Beth pop up in my news feed a whole lot quicker than um, uh, 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 Michael Jordan okay that's because of edge rank if you want to learn more about edge rank go to what is edge rank .com. and know that it's not an affiliate link I don't own that website but uh, it's a good resource to learn about edge rank. So once we learn about edge rank, how can we use this to our advantage? Because <laughs> that's what we're here for, right? <clears throat> when you are setting up your Facebook uh, uh, page and you are friending and you're interacting with content, there are some things that you want to pay attention to. I'm going to shoot through these real quick, and then I'm actually going to pull up Facebook and try to give you some visual examples. Number one, after you friend somebody, there is an option uh, on their page, uh, in their uh, top of their page, that says uh, it's friends. You know, it'll be a check mark, or you're a friend. If you're a friend, then it'll be a check mark there. If not, then it'll be blank, and you can uh, click it to uh, request them to add you as a friend. Okay. In the event that you have a friend, never ever select the option to be an acquaintance. The reason for that is because it negatively affects your page rank with that person and it negatively affects the page rank from their content on your news feed. They look at the term acquaintance as you're not really a friend, it's just some, some dude or some chick that you know. <laughs> And, and I'm kind of paraphrasing what uh, uh, Zuckerberg's uh, development team said when I was researching this. Uh, the acquaintance is a no-no unless you want to begin segmenting all your friends. And once you get to, you know, three, four, five thousand friends, you want to begin segmenting them out uh, to uh, prioritize the content that you see, okay? Uh, because Facebook wants to give relevancy in your friends. When Facebook first started, you had all these people that had, you know, 20,000, 50, 100,000 friends. Did they know all those people? No. They just thought it'd be cool to have 100,000 friends. So Facebook has slowly been getting away from that. And a few years ago, they put in that requirement uh, or that uh, cap where you can only have 5,000 friends, you know, directly connected to you. So that was the start of this evolution. So now, to make the content relevant, which I will share with you that if your content is relevant, then the ads that they are displaying to you based upon that content that you like reading will also become relevant, which will increase ad revenue for Facebook. Okay? So that's the reason for this change. But uh, the only time you'll ever set a person as an acquaintance is if you want to segment them out from, say, your inner circle of true friends. Okay? That is something that I will never do to Jeff's account <laughs> or Beth's account or any of you guys on this on this uh, team. All right, <clears throat> look to post your content that your current friends will enjoy reading. What does that mean? Never post content 
that you think will attract new people to try to like you or to try to ask you to be a friend with them. Don't do that. Reason for that is because this edge rake algorithm is going to look to say, uh, well, you know what? This person keeps posting all this stuff all over the board. Eh, it's really not that relevant to their 800 friends, so we're going to post it way down on the news feed if it's going to make the news feed at all. So only post content that your current friends are interested in, okay? That's going to increase your edge rank. How it's going to increase your edge rank? Well, they have... Uh, algorithms and metrics built around your likes, your shares, and your comments. We'll talk about that in a second. Use pictures often, okay? <clears throat> um, I, I fall victim to this a lot myself because uh, if I'm posting something usually on my phone or, uh, you know, or uh, I just want to get a quick message out or something, uh, a lot of times I'll just post a sentence and send it out. That's not bad, but if you're trying to really work on increasing your edge rank, you want to send pictures. Why? Because people uh, will look at your pictures and you will get a lot more engagement, a lot more likes, shares, and comments with pictures. Okay? So use pictures as often as you can. Make sure that you do this. I probably should put this in bold, and I think I will. <clears throat> engage often, okay? Engage often. When someone sends content that you like, don't just look at it and go, oh, that's cool, and keep moving. Click like on it. If you see this content and uh, it's something that you agree with or you can use this and, and I'll, I'll share with you that uh, you can use shares to help build up not only your page rank but also your engagement with your other posts. So that's another secret that not a lot of people talk about. See, what I do <clears throat> is uh, I go to other leaders in my industry's web pages or excuse me, Facebook pages and if they post something that is really impactful, I'll share it on my page, okay? Now, the people that, uh, that have liked me in my industry will resonate with that share, and they will like my share, which will increase my edge rank, okay? I don't know why people don't share. Now, you don't go crazy and share every single thing on there because, you know, that doesn't make sense. But, you know, I, I follow... Uh, uh, Jim Rohn and uh, Bob Proctor stuff, and sometimes Bob Proctor will put a picture in one of his sands up there, and I'm like, that's really cool. This may help my team, so I'll share it and put it on my Facebook, uh, my Facebook uh, wall, and I'll get likes and shares and comments on my wall. So engage other people's content, other people's relevant content often, okay? Don't look, don't go crazy. It has to it has to make sense. Okay, if you're liking every single thing a person does, regardless, then you know it's kind of it's kind of shady. But if you see something that you really liked, take a millisecond and click like on it. <clears throat> Share content and also take time to post a comment. Posting comments is also powerful because it will yet again, not only put your Facebook account on somebody else's wall, it's not just their news feed, it will be actually under that uh, post, okay? So they will see your face or whatever your, your uh, avatar picture is and your link to go back and ask to be your friend, okay? Like, share, and comment. It is crucial. Do not rely on YouTube. <clears throat> Had to grab some water there. Do not rely on YouTube. Why? YouTube is owned by dun, 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 uh, Google. They bought it a few years back. Google is in direct competition with Facebook. 
Remember the little discussion about uh, the Google boys creating page rank and then the Facebook guys creating edge rank, page rank and edge rank, you know, they're in competition. If you want to get your video on Facebook, if you can, using tools like Camtasia, upload your video directly to your Facebook wall. You will get 10 times the edge rank, 10 times the love from Facebook when you upload your videos directly to Facebook. I guarantee it. I've tested this extensively at the beginning of this year, as a matter of fact, because uh, and I was freaking out going, you know, this is a great video. I'm getting, you know, two, three hundred hits on YouTube, and I stick it over here on Facebook, and like two people look at it. What's the deal? Well, Facebook purposefully <laughs> will not give you the same amount of love when you link out to YouTube. They don't want your traffic. They don't want people in Facebook leaving Facebook to go to YouTube. They want people to stay in Facebook. So if you can, as often as you can, upload your video directly to YouTube and you will see a world of difference. I hope that's helpful for you. Please do it because I know it works. Uh, Jeff, you want to take a break while we, uh, before we get into some ninja tip tricks or anything? Because I know uh, we may have some questions out there. No, actually, the questions I've seen, uh, you're doing an awesome job of covering them. So uh, go ahead and uh, you know jump right into those ninja tricks, man. Okay. All right. Cool. <clears throat> and I want to be respectful of people's time as well, because you know I know there's a lot of content out here on the internet, and and uh, you go, man, yet another four-hour-long video. You know, where do I skip to to get to the meat? So. Uh, what I'm going to do is give you a couple of my ninja tricks that uh, the reason why I call them ninja is I don't think anybody else is doing this. And number two, it's uh, from the mind of Big Polly. So uh, I consider myself a uh, pretty cool ninja guy. <laughs> the first one is the hashtag strategy. All right. I couldn't come up with a better name, so deal with it. It's the hashtag strategy. I'll give you the... Uh, the background behind the strategy briefly. If you notice, a hashtag is uh, this thing that you see all over the internet that was started by uh, Twitter. It's the pound symbol and uh, some uh, some uh, keyword, okay? And we all should know what a keyword is. It's just a, uh, a single word topic or a single phrase topic, so we call it a keyword. Um, it starts with a pound symbol. When you put the pound symbol in front of it, what it does is that it makes the content attached to this hashtag part of a global conversation. Okay, As you can see, I went to Google and just put in hashtag, and some of the most, most popular stuff that's going on now is your selfies. You know, uh, President Barack Obama is taking selfies and posting them on the, the uh, White House website and all that stuff. Uh, you can also do a search for, uh, say, Internet Marketing. No? Okay. Uh, let's see. What's uh, popular in the news? Uh, let's say Clippers. Yeah, because of that stuff going on with the Clippers owner. So that's a popular conversation going around the Internet. The whole concept of a hashtag was started uh, with Twitter, and uh, the other social networks saw how powerful it was that you can address a conversation and see an entire thread, regardless of the account that your content is posted on, you can see that entire thread by just searching for this hashtag. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, once the social media folks picked up on it, like uh, Facebook and, and um, MySpace and those other guys, uh, the search engines picked up on it as well which is why I can go to Google and do that. Now let's see, let's test this with uh, Facebook. Up in the search at the top of Facebook, I can type uh, hashtag Clippers, and it's going to pull up a lot of relevant content, <clears throat> people that uh, are in this conversation about the Clippers. And I can guarantee you that all of these accounts and these pages are not friends of each other. So it's a way of, of accessing a global conversation, if you will. Okay. Here's the hashtag strategy. 
if you want to get more traffic to your blog, or in this case, a specific blog post, which is going to turn into uh, followers and more traffic to your overall blog, you want to first go to hashtags.org and you want to find hot topics, okay? Uh, they actually have a paid, um, a paid membership. I don't do it because honestly they provide so much information just on this home page. It's pretty awesome. These are the hashtags or conversations that are trending up. These are the ones that are trending down. And these are the uh, most popular ones to date or right now. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, iPad games. So let's click on here. It's going to give you some uh, basic metrics about the hashtag iPad games that's going on. Uh, Twitter. Wow. Let's see. 40,000 mentions this morning last night, this morning, and it's dropping off. Something must have happened. Some new iPad game or something probably got released last night or yesterday. Pretty cool. Very powerful information. Okay. So, uh, let's say, uh, let's find one that's trending up. This is hot, but it's losing, you know. Let's, uh, uh, happy birthday, Damon. Huh. That's interesting. Let's click on that. Happy birthday, Damon, is shooting up. Cool. Let's see who's talking about happy birthday, Damon. You can scroll down, and in the analytics section here, it will show all the tweets that have the hashtag happy birthday, Damon. You can go to people's Twitter pages here and check out the links and see what they're talking about. Once you have selected a hot topic, <clears throat> you want to write a relevant blog post, okay? Relevant blog post to this topic. In the blog post itself, you want to use the hashtag, okay? Let's find one that's relevant to making money or our industry somewhere, you know, not happy birthday, Damon. Uh, vote in, I don't know who that is, uh, PVP. Okay, let's do PVP. Uh, Beth, I'm sure you know what PVP is. It's a, you know, player versus player in the gaming world. That's a, you know, synonymous with uh, fighting in the game. You know, uh, I'm gonna challenge this person to some mission or something in the game. So obviously, there's a lot of talk about PVP that's going on right now. Uh, in the last hour or so, uh, 871 mentions of hashtag PVP. Let's say that our business is a game company, okay? Um, we want to write relevant content on our corporate blog about the new PvP engine that we've released in our cool game that we want people to purchase, okay? So we'll write relevant content. We will use the hashtag PvP in the blog post itself. Um, honestly, it doesn't matter where. You can put it at the bottom as long as the search engine see it. That's it. Okay, don't do anything weird like go in the code and try to put it in the header. Don't, don't do anything like that. Literally put it in the body of your blog post. You can put it at the top or towards the bottom or even in the content itself if you, if you like. <clears throat> Once you do that, the next step is to submit it to the social networks. You take your blog post that you just written that's relevant to, in our example here, PVP, hashtag PVP. You take that link and you go to a Facebook, you go to a Twitter, you go to multiple social networks if you're smart. You know, me, I normally do Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus, okay? If I'm really trying to push traffic, I go to the big three, okay? If it's business specific, I'll even add in LinkedIn, okay? Uh, once you do that, you put in some content in the social network that continues the conversation. Hey, this is a cool blog post I just wrote about our new PvP engine in uh, the hottest game that we're selling, our, our biggest seller right now. Boom, put the link to your blog post, hashtag PvP. You also use that hashtag again 
in your uh, social network post, okay? You also put that in Twitter, Facebook, whatever. What you've done is you have created a piece of content and you've added it to the global conversation. In this example, it's hashtag PVP, okay? And as people are talking about PVP and searching for PVP, because they do search for hashtags on the social networks, Twitter, Facebook, and the search engines, like we just did. I pulled up hashtag and selfie popped up. So if people who are in the gaming industry or big gamers or somebody wants to hear about, hey, I heard rumors about a new PVP engine to this new game, they're going to search hashtag PVP and guess what's going to be in the global conversation. Boom, your relevant content, you're going to start pulling in love from all over the place. Then rinse and repeat. Quite simple. Guys, nobody's doing this. I, I, get, I get traffic on demand and it's free. It just takes a little bit of effort and some time to put good relevant content out there and you are syndicating your relevant content through the social networks by using this hashtag strategy. That's it. That's it. And uh, because you're part of that global conversation, the search engines will pick it up too. So that's ninja trick number one. It's pretty cool. That's uh, I usually don't share that outside of the team, but uh, hey, use it. Go forth and conquer. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about another trick that's still powerful today, guest posts. Guest posts are simply uh, you contact a blog owner and say, how would you like for me to provide relevant content about X? I will provide that content to you, and for no charge, you just post it. The only thing I ask in return is that at the bottom, you allow me to uh, cite where you got it from, which is a link pointing back to your blog. <laughs> Quite simple. But because it takes a little bit of effort to go out and content, contact blog owners, a lot of people do not do this trick. It's still powerful. Use it. There is also a way to do this in reverse by contacting uh, people that you are, admire in the industry. Okay, let's say um, I'm going to shoot an email to Jeff Altman and say, hey dude, I love what you're doing. I love your websites. I love your blog posts. Uh, I would love to ask uh, you to write a blog post for me and I'll post it on my website. Okay? Well, Jeff is going to go, well shoot, that's free advertising for me. Yeah, I'll write it. Okay? And Jeff's going to write the content, shoot it over, and you're going to post it on your website. Then what you do is you syndicate that and say, hey, Jeff Altman, magnificent leader in this industry, has taken the time to write an exclusive blog post on my blog. Check it out here. Boom. You're going to get people who are following Jeff that are going to now start reading your blog posts and eventually become a follower of you if you're putting good content out there and begin become... Uh, one of your uh, audience and sales on and on and on. You see how this works. Guest posts are not being done a lot. That's why it's a ninja trick. Do it. Take some extra time to shoot an email to somebody that's in your industry that you admire or whatever, or um, or you can even work out a deal with them to say, look, uh, I would love to put a blog post on, on your website, on your blog, uh, I tell you what, I will reciprocate and allow you to post a blog of one that you write on my blog. Use that technique. It works. <clears throat> oh, wow. <laughs> Question and answer. Um, you know, I got, I got some other stuff, but uh, I tell you what. Jeff, uh, do we have any questions out there? I'm going to stop right now. You know, Polly, the questions that I saw, you uh -huh. did an absolutely phenomenal job of covering them. Okay. Um, you know, I just wanted to uh, throw out a couple of comments there, and maybe you can uh, comment on my comments. But absolutely, a lot of great stuff was covered today, and I really, really appreciate it. I mean, all this stuff is incredibly relevant, 
And I just want to let everybody out there know that you don't have to master all of this stuff all at once. Um, I'd really recommend that everybody take the time, you know, get with myself, get with Beth, um, you know, uh, Polly's a member of our Skype groups, I believe. If not, we're going to make sure that that happens here in the near near future. If you have questions, get with us and master one thing at a time, and you know, then move to the next thing. And I'm going to tell you that all these resources that Polly mentioned and that I mentioned last week, they're all very simple. But I'm going to warn you, especially something like uh, Empire. Uh, what was it? Empire Avenue. Yes. Yeah, Empire Avenue. Um, you know, if you if you're not careful, a lot of these things can become huge, huge time sucks. Oh yeah. And you really want to be careful about that. I mean, I've got this down to a science where once I get a blog post up, that I can take about a half hour and run through all of these things. But you know, I, I've spent some time learning how to use them. And you know, I just want to caution you: don't get yourself overwhelmed by trying to learn everything all at once. I want you to, you know, first of all, get the Viral Blogging Academy, get the 15K formula. All this stuff is covered in depth, step by step. Not only are you going to, you know, get the education you need to make all this stuff that we talked about work, but once you have these products and once you start using these strategies, commissions are going to happen. They're going to pay for these products 15, 20, 30, 50, you know, thousands of times over by accident because, you know, people are going to, you know, and don't be afraid to reference these things in your blog post because, you know, it, your blog's going to sell these products for you. So it's very important that you have them. Um, all the information's there. And if you have any problems, get with myself, get with Beth. Um, you know, we'll we'll get you the answers you need. We we've got them up here, and you know, don't be afraid to use us. That's what we're here for. Absolutely, absolutely. I agree, one hundred and ten percent. I just wanted to say thank Go you for calling for, for coming out today. Um, unfortunately, I had a family emergency arise, so I have to scoot here right away. But uh, I'll be watching the end of this for the, for the replay. So. Thanks again, Polly, for coming out. Um, you've done, as again, just an amazing job of covering the, uh, the whole blogging thing. That's just awesome. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch up later if possible. Absolutely. Yeah, we did, we did have some technical difficulties last week on part one of this. I will be reshooting that. I had planned to do it this week, but I uh, wasn't able to get to it. But I will be getting to that real shortly. And we will continue this topic next week for sure, uh, whether it's just myself or whether Polly's going to come um, back, I, I know he'll be back at some point, and we definitely appreciate his time. And you know, folks, we're going to get it down to a science within this group to, um, you know, utilize these blogs to get, you know, thousands upon thousands of free eyeballs on your content, and you know, teach you how to con convert these people into members of your team. I mean, it's, it's a really simple strategy once you get it down. It's very inexpensive, and it's incredibly duplicatable, and that's what we're striving for here. So, you know, Polly, if you got any last things to add before we wrap this thing up, uh, you know, I just want to say once again, we really appreciate you, and, you know, just absolutely phenomenal content. Thanks, Jeff. Uh I got to be careful because when I get warmed up, I'm like, when I saw that last slide, it's like, oh, wait a minute, I'm done already? I'm like, man, I want to give more. I'm just getting started. But um, uh, it's it's all, you, please remember this, uh, it's a process, okay? As, like Jeff said, don't think that you have to master all these techniques to be successful. Focus on one or two techniques or methods that resonate with you then become a, an absolute expert guru at that one technique. Force that one method to begin giving you success, okay? Once you do that, you can begin adding in the other tools. You can look at other methods, okay? Um, a, a lot of things that I see in this industry is uh, people will see um, the buffet table that's full of of methods and tips and tricks and and websites and services and they go well um, let me just dive in and they will do a little bit here and a little bit there and then they'll take a step back and go wow I, I expended a lot of energy 
and didn't get a whole lot of success. If you change your methods to go, okay, I'm going to do this for this week or two and get really good at either Facebook or whatever it is, you will have a lot more success a lot quicker uh, if you just become really good at one thing and then slowly add in another thing, then slowly add in another thing and another thing. And that way you can begin building your bag of tricks over time. Okay? The name of the game is uh, uh, being successful in making sales because, uh, like Jeff says, when he's uh, promoting and doing stuff online and he's making money, it is funding his business. Okay? It's paying for marketing. It's paying for cool new tools and resources that now, okay, I made an extra 200 bucks last week. I'm going to roll that into this now to help build your business. Guys, this is a real business, and you have to treat it as such. And when you jump in and try to be a master of all, you become a master of none, and that hurts. And I'm speaking from experience when I say that. Um, uh, keep at it. Like I put in my first, very first uh, few slides, discipline. Uh, make sure that you spend time every day doing something in your business, whether that's generating content, whether that's going through the training, which is huge, by the way. You never stop learning, okay? Never stop learning. I had the privilege of going to a mastermind event in D.C. Uh, not too long ago, and there were some very heavy hitters in there. We're talking seven, eight, nine-figure people are in the room. And what struck me was that they were all talking about what they're reading, uh, why they were at an event, and why they were at an event was to learn. They were talking about uh, going to another event or learning a new technique or bringing on new people into their business to learn new things to keep things fresh. You never stop learning, okay? So uh, keep at it. Do something in your business every day. Never stop learning, and uh, you're, you're going to make it. Regardless of what your goals are, you will make it. And uh, knowing Jeff like I know him, he's going to make sure you're going to make it. So you guys are working with uh, the, the cream of the crop here with Jeff. And I am uh, honored to come here to try to share my knowledge with you guys. And I hope, um, I hope I've given you some, you some value. And um, I hope that uh, I'll see you guys soon at some event somewhere. Paul, and uh, we'll be uh, hanging out. Paulie, I know we want to we cover a couple other things real quick before we wrap this up in, in a few minutes. And one of the beautiful things that the Empower Network, uh, the new viral, or the blog beast is what they like to call it, has given us the opportunity to do is automatically share our blog post with our downlines and I wanna I want to tell everybody out there that one of the quickest ways we can give each other some love and some juice and um, you know get things picked up is we need to comment on and share each other's blog posts we need to be active on commenting you know Polly talked about commenting and sharing um, on Facebook, but it's also a pop, uh, just incredibly important that we do that with each other's blog posts. And I want to challenge everybody out there to, you know, get into the eight core concepts and blog once a day getting started. Um, it's it's just, you know, important that you do that once a day. And I know that Polly wants to put out a challenge to everybody out there to, uh, um, you know, take a look at his Facebook page, and he's got a little challenge out there to get you guys a little love on your next couple blog posts. So um, let's uh, let's wrap up with that, Polly, if you want to. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, thank you for that, Jeff. Uh, guys, uh, go to facebook.com forward slash Polly DMG. That's P A U L I E D M G. David Michael George. Okay. The very first or a very first post at the top is a thread that says submit your blog post here for some love okay I challenge every one of you to go to your Empower Network blog or even if you're using a third party uh, system uh, to post your content and uh, post your link here on my page what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm constantly driving traffic to my fan page and I want people to see your work and I want to help you build your readership so as you're posting your links on my fan page uh, as a community we're gonna be sharing notes with each other and I'm also driving traffic from outside of the community to my fan page and they will see your blog posts so 
the ones that take action and do this are going to reap the rewards. You're going to get free traffic. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Take action. Yeah, I mean, I, I got to thank you for that, Polly. I mean, I've done it before and got a, you know, like you like you call it, I've gotten the incredible amount of love from it, and you know, that's a phenomenal thing you're doing for us. And you know, I want everybody to look at that uh, that great big huge thing behind me there. That's a that's a master's degree in business administration, and, and I, I want to make the point that, you know, yeah, that looks great on a resume, and, and I'll tell you what, it to me, it's a worthless piece of paper. I'll take the I'll take the PhD in internet marketing that I've gotten from all the products in Empower Network over that piece of paper over my head that a lot of people think is very prestigious. I mean, becoming a student of this business is what's going to make us all the money and you know give us the knowledge that we need to go forward and continue to consistently build our income. You know, becoming a student. What I've learned in the last year and a half since I've been in Empower Network. I would I would take you know the few thousand dollars I've spent on that or invested in myself on that education over that MBA or you know all of the 18 years of knowledge that I've accrued over you know my internet marketing career I'll I'll take it throw all that away if you just give me what I've learned in the Empower Network with the 15K formula, the Viral Blogging Academy, the High Ticket Academy, the Master's Course. I mean, I, I'd give everything else I know back if I could just have that knowledge. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful, and I agree. <laughs> I agree. Wow. Well, I got nothing else. I'm, I'm just. I'm excited to see who's going to take action. Uh, that that's what I'm waiting on. You know, people. Are, the ball's out there. It's time to pick it up and run with it. And we're going to be here to help you score along the way. All right, everybody, have a great weekend or a great rest of the weekend, and uh, let's get it done. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Thanks, Holly, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk soon. Absolutely. Bye-bye, y'all. All right, we'll see you.